Good evening. Welcome everybody to another edition of the spring webinars. We've had a lot of full webinars and now we're already into our spring Wednesday evening webinars. Um, it's a privilege for me to be able to record from the office. So um, as gradually, especially with vaccines on the way, things life gradually begins to return to normal. So I wanted to really to welcome everybody to uh, tonight's edition. And without further ado, I'm going to share my screen. Let's do this. And um, we'll dive into some of the slides. Okay, can everyone see my screen okay? That's a thumbs up, excellent, thank you. Okay, so here we go. This is actually based on a book that I read over the summer. You're welcome to get it out of the library or to buy it on Amazon. Um, it's called actually the two hour job search. So what I've tried to do is to suggest that uh, job searches can take hours and hours and days and days and weeks and weeks and months. Um, in fact, an average job search under normal times, uh, even internship searches can take, let's say two to four months. And under uncertain times, such as the Corona era, perhaps we need to account for an even longer period. But what we wanna give some tips tonight on how to really make that effective and how to streamline our search. So we're really targeting and making the most of our time. So let me just dive in. I won't give a long introduction. This is us. There's actually one of us is uh, missing. His name is Jim. He would be right next to me on the screen. Uh, but this was taken just before, uh, a little bit before he was hired and a, a little bit before the Corona era. Um, and so this is our wonderful team with a mixture of employer relations and also the advisors here. Um, and we all welcome you to our offices or to meet with us over Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Our next um, slide launches right into it. So let me, without sort of reading word for word, um, as you know, for more, anyone that's applied for jobs recently, we have the power of the internet and LinkedIn's easy apply feature and other sub websites to make it super easy to apply for jobs. The question is um, how many people, and maybe I'll just ask, uh, you're welcome to just put in the chat if you've had any success from applying, like clicking easy apply or doing a, applying online and getting a callback for an interview. If anyone um, has had success with that, let's say in the last six months, um, do let me know. I'm gonna keep uh, one eye on my chat. I'm gonna bring it over to my screen here and uh, that way we can hear a little bit. Um, what I do hear from most of our students um, and others and from friends and colleagues and alumni is that when they use the Easy Apply, they cannot be applying to even you know, dozens of jobs a day. Uh, maybe schools of jobs a week and hundreds a month and basically hear back virtually nothing. So um, for those in the know, uh, for those like myself that were a hiring manager, I can tell you that as uh, so I was on the other side, you know, really there, um, not just applying, I've been through that myself, but on hiring people, I can tell you that most, most hiring managers are very similar to me. They don't read most uh, job applications, whether they're from the internet or uh, however they come in they really rely on referrals, right? So in other words, if someone is known to me or known to a member of my team, they really get priority. I'm gonna be looking out for their resume. Um, I'm gonna be looking out. Those are really the only people that are gonna to get to the top of my pile. And whether there's another 20 applicants, 100 applicants, doesn't really matter almost like how many applicants are in the pool. Uh, I'm not really gonna to pay too much attention to them because what I really wanna know is, you know, can someone do the job and the best referral um, or the best way to gauge that is uh, someone that knows you and could say, you know what, this person has their head screwed on the right way, they're an uh, upstanding individual, has some good encounters with them. However, they, they know you hopefully relatively well by the time you actually come to apply. Um, that, those are the people that are gonna rise to kind of the top of the pile. So in this presentation, you can see there's uh, three steps at the bottom. We're only really gonna cover the first two. Um, and the first two, in the words of Steve Dalton, who is the author of this uh, book that you see up here, he is the one um, he characterizes, he talks about three different steps, prioritizing, contacting, and recruiting. Recruiting doesn't mean that you're gonna be recruiting, uh, you're not gonna be hiring, you're, you're the person trying to get hired, but what it does mean is you're recruiting or building allies. And to do that, for those of you that have heard of informational interviewing, you're gonna have a little bit of a leg up. Um, but again, tonight we're really gonna, we're not, Quite going to get to informational interviewing. We'll touch upon it right at the end, um, but we're going to look at Steve Dalton's first two steps, prioritizing and contacting. So here we go. Step number one, 
he um, introduces something called the LEMP method. And again, you can read a lot more about it. Um, if this gets too technical, as some, sometimes it's, uh, it can get a little technical. Again, feel free to take advantage of uh, our team to discuss a little bit more. Certainly, I'm, I'm familiar with this method, but all of our colleagues can give you different ways to target, um, all of my colleagues can give you ways of targeting employers. So here's his LEMP method, and we're going to go through one by one. L for list, A for alumni, M for motivation, and P for posting. So what he says is make yourself, begin by making yourself a list. Don't even apply. Again, we want to make sure that no one's applying at this point. You're really shortlisting. You're going to create a document. Hopefully, all of you will be familiar with either Microsoft uh, Excel or uh, Google Sheets. And um, I would say if you're not familiar with either of those, then go on to microsoftoffice.com or office.com. Take a few of their Excel tutorials. Um, they're wonderful. You can go on YouTube. You can find a lot of them too. And gradually build up your competency in Excel because it's a definitely a lifelong skill. Um, and Google Sheets is, um, obviously works well too and has a lot of the functionality for those that don't have uh, Microsoft Excel. So um, we will refer back to, uh, I, might, I might refer back to Excel and I will refer back to Excel, but uh, we can use them interchangeably. So you'll have a list which is divided into four parts. And um, so we're still on the L of LEMP, but we'll further divide our list, the L, into four different parts. And we're going to explain each of those parts. And perhaps better than explaining, I'm actually going to show you a uh, document that I created. And I'd be happy if you email me after this uh, session. I'd be happy to share with you my document. Let me put it up on the screen in the hope that uh, it will come up right over here. Uh, tell me if you just a, a quick thumbs up if you can see. Uh, the Excel document. Okay, fabulous. Okay, don't worry about all my tabs down here. Um, thank you. I got some nice thumbs up there. Appreciate it. Um, so what we've done is we've taken, uh, we've sort of divided around 40. It can be a little bit more. It shouldn't be too much less because you need a nice pool of employers to start with, right? We want to shortlist at least 40. If it's 50, great. If it's 60, I wouldn't go crazy and do like 78 or 100. I think that's a bit too many to start with. But um, start off with about 40, so you can divide them into groups of 10, roughly speaking. Um, and I pretended that I was interested in the tech field. So I started to list, OK, what are some of the most popular companies? What would I be interested in if I was just Googling? Um, and that's, in fact, my top one It's Google. So I, I said, let me divide the list into four parts. Dream employers, alumni employers, posting search, and trend following. So let's see how that works. So give me one moment. Let me get my Excel. Spreadsheet back up. Hang on just one moment. Just lost that. All right, here it is. Okay. So um, in my first, so I'm just listening for now. So, okay, we've got a lot of uh, dream employers. I'd like to work for Google, Apple, Facebook, maybe Twitter, Uber. And then I'm going to fill in a couple of other dream employers, things that I, you know, maybe when I was younger uh, or I was like, oh my goodness, I'd always love to work for that. Or maybe when I wasn't much younger, it was just a week ago. I was like, hey, wouldn't that be a cool? I just saw an ad for it, or I use it every day. Why don't I work for be a kind of an engineer, software engineer, or coder for those um, one of those companies? And your next one is you're going to list ten companies where we have alumni working at. Now, if you don't already know where our alumni work at, then I want to say shame on you. <laughs> That's probably not polite. That bit might get edited out of our video. So. What I want to tell you is really to encourage you to come to our events. We do tech events. We do finance events. We do events on all, for all different fields. We collaborate with many of the clubs. We're doing a consulting industry event um, in a couple of weeks, February 16th. And you can actually go onto YU events calendar, and you'll actually see all the events that the Career Center is planning for this coming semester. There may be one or two others that um, you know, uh, pop up at the last minute in collaboration with some of the clubs, but generally we plan all our event of, of our events are already sort of planned by the beginning of each semester and all of the dates are on uh, the calendar there. If you don't see your industry, let's say you're really interested in marketing and we didn't have any marketing related event, um, speak to us. And suddenly if you're in one of the clubs, collaborate with us and we're happy to um, support helping you to um, um, helping you to network. So let me just tell you again, if you haven't come to one of our events, and use the networking time at those events um, to whether they're online in the virtual world or in person, hopefully again, before not too long, uh, please um, take advantage and look out for those events. If not, then I would say just go on to LinkedIn and
and you will be able to um, use the alumni search. And for those that aren't familiar, I'm just going to spend two seconds bringing that up right now, if I can. Here we go. And let's see what we have. OK, so now I'm going to go into my search box on LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile yet, please, please, please make that a priority. I would say that should be your weekend assignment. I can't say it's more important than any other assignment, but it's uh, certainly if you're looking at your future beyond YU, which all of you are uh, clearly those who are attending, those who are listening to this on our YouTube channel, we want you all to have a LinkedIn profile. Now on LinkedIn, you can do some very fun things. And one of them is you can type in Yeshiva University. Um, you can actually find uh, the Career Center's LinkedIn page and you can join that and we post some fun things and relevant things on that too. But for now, I'm just gonna click on alumni just going to take one minute for those of you that uh, aren't familiar. And then you can start typing in uh, anything. So let's say we mentioned before, let's say I want to know who among our alumni are software developers. So I'm quickly going to go over here and I'm going to see, okay, where do they work? So here I've got Google. Well, wow, interesting. Goldman Sachs. I thought that was a finance company. Well, maybe, uh, maybe yes, but it's also there may be a strong area of fintech, financial technology, and an overlap between those industries. And any firm needs perhaps uh, any firm of sizable, which is you know, of any size, needs uh, some people that are doing the um, developing and the coding and the programming and so on. So here's a couple of others. You can actually see why you among them. We've got Amazon. We have some alumni there. If you want to see exactly who they are, well, let's do this. Let's go into IBM. And let's just scroll down now. And I'm going to see all of those people that are actually working for IBM. So I could potentially click on one of them. Since, uh, here's a deployment technician. I want to find out what that means. So maybe I'll click on him, see if I can connect with him, find out a little bit more. Now, before I even do that again, this is going to give me an idea that tells me of IBM, but it gives me an idea of all different other companies that I could apply to. Maybe just not just tech companies, maybe other companies too. So I might put in here, uh, hey, well, wouldn't it be nice to work for Goldman Sachs? Uh, and Actually, I'll probably put that in the alumni column, right? Because I know already that I there's a alumni there. We have alumni working in BlackRock on the uh, another big finance company on the tech side um, and cybersecurity side and so on. So this would be great for our alumni. Uh, sorry, for our graduate students as well. Um, our next category, if we uh, look back to our uh, posting, is um, hang on, sorry look back over here is our dream employers. We've got alumni employers. We saw how to find some of the employers that are uh, our alumni are working for. Then a general posting search. That's very simple to uh, figure out. So the posting search means if I just go on to something like indeed.com and I start typing in software developer and maybe put in my region, I would say that today regions are less important, right? Because it used to be maybe if I was in New York, I would only work for a company in New York, but suddenly in the software field, even before Corona, there may be possibilities to work for companies that are much more diverse, right? And might may diverse geographically, meaning they may be fine with me working from New York, um, even though they're based like Hulu is in uh, California, right? So Hulu might have some postings. Um, who else? When I see a lot of other companies, so whatever's publicly posted, that's the P in LAMP. I can fill in my 10 companies there. Again, don't have to go, don't have to go crazy. 10 is, is perfect. And uh, as you can see, our last set of, um, we called it trends following, right? So here you need to do a little bit of research, right? These might be companies that don't immediately show up. They might be smaller companies. They might be startup companies that are actually perhaps very big, even in their home country, or maybe well-known in Silicon Valley, but not yet well-known beyond. So I would look at some of those. And of course, a great way to do that is just Googling uh, trends, right? So Google, what are the trends? What are the emerging companies in the software developer field, you know, where can I, what are perhaps the names that are less well known or um, emerging? So those you would then do a few ones, Epic. Um, I put that down when I was Googling before because they are the one of the largest um, healthcare records company and healthcare records in this, uh, in this world is becoming super popular. DocuSign obviously again in Corona is a super popular, was already popular before Corona, but now everyone wants to sign stuff electronically instead of in person. So those are perhaps some of the industry trends, and that will do for my column A. Then I want to go through them again. This will be simple, this section, because this was our alumni section. So we know already from looking at our alumni on LinkedIn that all of these 
we are going to have alumni working for us. So here we go. Um, but you'll have to do a little bit more research to a little bit more digging to see if you have it any of the others. Maybe some of the others will come up, you know, maybe at Google, yes. Maybe at Apple, we don't have anyone. Facebook, maybe we don't have anyone, but Twitter, we have uh, someone. Uber, oh, I put a one, see. Just a yes or a no is good for now. So here we are, this is uh, getting into the uh, meat and potato of it. I'm gonna uh, skip a little bit, but before I do, I'm gonna show you a completed version of the website, but let me show you another slide first. So here we go, we've already talked about dream employers. Okay, so they should share some common traits. Okay, and again, don't do too much research at this stage. This is supposed to be like a 45 minute search. It's not supposed to be hours and hours. This is really supposed to be laying the groundwork by building our shortlist. Um, and the shortlist will then lead us on to the informational interviews and those will eventually lead to discovering uh, the estimated 80% of jobs that aren't even advertised and that only the insiders actually know about. Um, and at the very least, you'll know about them perhaps if you connect with industry ins insiders before the job is even publicly posted. So you'll be one of the first to get it in. Alumni employer. So again, we uh, talked about that. Posting search, we said search for indeed.com, internships.com, any of those big um, websites, and you'll find um, you know, some good information to fill in that third section, those other 10 um, employers. And then the trend following, like we said, just Google Trends in your target industry, find out the employer names um, that are listed there and list those. Um, you can also find out, this is just an added thing if you're coming unstuck for whatever reason, uh, check the LinkedIn profiles of some of the alumni or people that are doing software developer. They might be at Google now, but where did they start off life, right? Or they might be at Hulu now or Netflix or something like that, but where did they, was that their first job out of college? Maybe they were at a lesser known company and maybe your chances are even greater if you're applying to lesser known companies because they don't have as many uh, eyes on their, uh, they don't have as many postings, they don't have as many um, views, if you like, people looking at the postings because they're not listed on Indeed or elsewhere. So have a look and, and be curious about where people have worked in the past before their current jobs. Uh, important tip for international students, um, you can check something like Visa, myvisajobs.com, I'm sorry, to find which employers offer H1B work authorization. And then you could actually add a column, which I've done on mine as a former international student. I'm, I'm uh, no longer, but 20 years ago, I was an international student. Um, and so that is an important, um, important thing to add to our, um, our spreadsheet. So here we are. Uh, our question would be, we just did find alumni. So we saw for those that are already alumni, you'll have access to why you illuminate. You'll be able to find other alumni through that. Uh, why you MVP, for those that don't know about it, uh, look it up right now. It's why you edu slash MVP. Um, you don't have to you know, register right now, but uh, you could register this evening. My colleague Matt will approve you tomorrow and you'll be good to go. You'll, a lot of our alumni are registered and they are ready and willing to give advice on all sorts of aspects of the job search. So this is a great way to connect with them. And we've just launched that for the CAT school as well, literally this week, hot off the press. Um, so our CAT alumni will be able to find other, sorry, our CAT students will be able to find uh, CAT alumni and Yeshiva alumni, and they'll be able also to make great connections to help you find alumni. Uh, the one thing I should just say is don't walk into our office or email us asking for a list because this is how we give that information, right? We don't uh, keep necessarily a current list of alumni. They all update their information on one of these platforms. This is where you go. This is what we've created for you to find our alumni. So don't expect we're gonna, you're gonna come into the office and you want a list of 10 alumni and we're just gonna kind of list them off. Um, this is really, you have the same access to them as we do through one of these platforms and through LinkedIn. Okay, so we saw that we put a yes or a no. So that's what we're up to in there. And then we wanna get to our next column. Okay, so I'm, uh, we want to assign target employees a score of one to five based on, <coughs> excuse me, based on your motivation, right? It could be that again, the big names of this world, the Hulus, the Netflix, the Googles, you're very motivated, you're very excited. Um, and so that's great. You can put a five there. There are others which maybe you haven't really heard of. You've saw they're trending, but you don't know much about them. You haven't done some much research so far, which is fine. So if you're unfamiliar, you'll list them as a one. If you're familiar, but you know, you're not that excited, maybe your ethics tell you that working for Uber or Lyft, uh, perhaps, um, you might have ethical questions about that. So you want to sort of uh, downgrade them to just a two or a three. Uh, it's really up to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ba go back in a second and uh, illustrate this on our, um, on our spreadsheets. And before I do that, uh, let me just give you again for the, our last column, which we'll fill in, 
Um, another way to measure this will also be on a Likert scale, one to five. If they have relevant postings, right? You then want to go through each one. So does Google, do they have a lot of postings? Because if there's no postings out there, it could be actually the company is in decline or they're on a hiring freeze, or there could be a different reasons. But if they don't have any posted positions, then they may, it may not be really worth your time to actually uh, contact uh, people at those companies and try making insider connections there um, if they really have nothing publicly posted. So, uh, you know, if there's one or two postings, or maybe there's no software engineering postings, but there are marketing postings or postings for many other teams or human resource or something like that. So it seems, okay, the company suddenly isn't going out of business. Um, there are positions just not in my field. So that might be just a two or a three. And if there are really no postings, again, you would, um, you would put it as a one. Now do not apply at this stage, okay? I, again, I think I emphasized that before, but again, this is just filling out our spreadsheet. There's no, not applying, we're creating our shortlist and we're almost done creating the shortlist, uh, but you are not going to be applying to any of them just yet. First, we're gonna rank them and then we're gonna sort them. So in order to make this process um, a little speedier, um, here you can start putting in a motivation or yeah, Google, I would love. Twitter, I don't know, they're very incendiary. Maybe I don't like the way Twitter incites riots or who knows what my uh, ethics are or politics are and so on. So maybe that will be a one for me. Um, maybe Uber also, like we said before, maybe just a two, Goldman Sachs, oh my goodness, that would be amazing. Uh, my last name is Goldman, maybe, well, it's Coleman, but you know, similar. Maybe I'd love to work there. And then you want to know, okay, based on the number of postings, well, Google, yeah, they have a lot of postings right now. So you have to go again onto indeed.com or internships.com, Apple, maybe they don't have quite as many postings right now. It's maybe more what my, one might consider a luxury market. And in Corona, maybe not as people, many people upgrading their phones right now. So maybe there aren't as many postings. Facebook also, maybe they're uh, in the process of layoffs and there's not too many postings out there. Maybe I can only find one or two um, and so on. And again, for those with H1B, you can use the same thing. You can put like, do, do this, does the company sponsor? You can go onto myvisajobs.com. I'll put it here again, myvisajobs.com. And you can look at companies that historically, uh, as of last year, they'll have the, the current, they'll have, they should have the data on 2020. Well, they might only have 2019, soon they'll have 2020 data and you'll be able to see, um, you know, do they, are, are these companies hire, hiring foreign nationals? And that can also influence your search. So, okay, at the end of the day, you're going to have something approximating this. You're going to have spent some time, um, hopefully not more than 45 minutes, but you'll have spent a little bit of time um, ranking sort of the, uh, your motivation, the postings, and so on. And then you can start doing some very fun things. And I've put just as a little help for me, A, Bs, and Cs. So what I might say is, well, I want to go by uh, A is just uh, the, the one that I want to sort through first. I'm going to sort it by motivation, because really, I don't want to spend too much time right now with uh, places that I'm not very motivated to even make connections in. So let's start over here. Let's sort by, hang on a second. Let me make sure I can do that. Here we go. Sort and filter. So let's do smallest to largest. No, we'll do largest to smallest. I'll expand my selection and here we go. So Google is still at the top of my list, but there's others that have now much higher up. eBay, Lamb, I'm very motivated. Maybe I know that a cousin who works for something like that. Maybe I know more about it. Cool name. Maybe I have also a relative there. Twitter, maybe. Then I'm going to sort by do they actually have postings? You know, what, what sort of volume of posting and what volume of relevant posting? So I'm going to also sort this column in largest to smallest. And that will change it again. Now I've got, okay, I can see what well, Samson is now in my top five. Telus haven't even necessarily, wouldn't have necessarily had that originally in my top 10 or top five even. But now that comes up. And what happens if now, because I want to start with people in my network, and by the way, you could expand this, doesn't have to be alumni. It could actually be people in your synagogue or your church, if there's uh, some of our alumni meet um, on this call, or um, people in our very close network. I mean, maybe a parent of a friend that works there, right? So it doesn't have to be alumni. It could be more just people that are in one of our immediate networks. Um, and here I'm going to go, let's see, let's do it, sort Z to A, and I'm going to get all my yeses over here, everywhere that I have alumni, so about 17 minus the top line, so about 16 of them, so which makes a nice place to start, 16 of them, and I'm going to start with the ones, obviously these two, so whenever I get five minutes, if I have, let's say, between classes or between 
uh, various different uh, I don't know activities that I'm engaged in, or maybe on my commute, I want to try commuting a little bit more. I have a few minutes. Um, why don't I start with the ones at my top of the list? And this will give you a priority list for um, which ones I'm going to start with making connections with alumni or making connections with people in my network. So just to recap a little bit, let's go back to our slides over here. So I should say, do not apply yet. That's what I mean. Uh, here we go. So we did some sorting, right? We, we sorted first the motivation column, the posting, then the alumni. Um, then we want to Google employers with a score of one. So um, if you find employers interesting, you can increase your motivation score, right? So in fact, um, and what I was, uh, if we look back at the, at the list, right, you might find, well, actually, you know, that's interesting because in my top, if I look at my top 10 here, NXP, I haven't even heard of, right? But I guess it came high up because I actually know there's an alumni there and because they actually have a lot of postings on the internet. So maybe this is worth exploring a little further. So I'm gonna Google a little bit more about the company. Now, again, if it turns out that this is a company that's like, I don't know, into e-cigarettes, right? Maybe that's the new, uh, they need software programming for their new new iteration of the e-cigarette perhaps. Um, I might not be so inclined to, um, you know, to actually uh, work for that company. So I might decide I'm gonna strike that off my list and perhaps even find another one to take its place. Um, but, you know, perhaps when I Google it, I find, hey, that's interesting. You know what, like they're an Israeli company or they're an Italian company, but they're expanding into the US. This looks like a really interesting opportunity. So I actually do some digging, I find out more and I decide, hey, you know what? My motivation for that is actually gonna increase to, that sounds pretty cool. Let me increase it to four. And now I could reorder my C column again. And presumably if we've done this correct, let's have a look then that will rise further up the list. So here we go. Uh, maybe I didn't order that correctly. Okay, I'll have to uh, practice with that again. But in any case, they are here to, uh, I don't think I expanded my selection. I think that was my problem in any case. Um, so this is a way we'll start exploring more of those companies that I might not know much about before I reach out to alumni. So here is the next step, reaching out to people in our circles or what Steve Dalton the author of the two hour job search calls naturalizing and contacting. So let's dive right in. And he says, naturalizing means how do I convert a no to a yes or an N to a Y? So let's see what he means by that. He says, in your final lamp list, focus on employers with N in the alumni column and use the following algorithm to convert N to Y. So he's saying, how can I say, okay, I might not have a lot, there may not be alumni, but as we said, maybe there are other people close to us that we actually can find out uh, work that we might not even know. Who knew that someone, you know, our fifth cousin or who knew that uh, someone in our synagogue works there. So a good way to find some of those people are um, either through Facebook, through Googling, uh, you can even make some cold calls, but again, look on LinkedIn for your first or second degree, degree connections, find out who else besides for alumni works there and then you can, um, you can, in the alumni column, convert those and say, okay, those are actually gonna be uh, yeses. Those are people that we, that we know. So we'll look at that again in a second. And here's an example of how to do it with LinkedIn. You can just search for the employer name. You're gonna see immediately the first degree connections that come up, you're gonna see second degree. Those people you can just reach out to a message very easily. As many of you may know, third degree connections is much harder to connect with unless you're on LinkedIn Premium. And even then you have to use your in-mail. Uh, so I would say, you know, focus again on first and second degree connections and, and building your connections each month. And um, anyone who's in a group, now some of you may not know, but there are groups that you can join on LinkedIn. So I'm going to uh, quickly just show you our LinkedIn again. And again, let's say I'm on, interested in the software field. You know what, let's change, change my field for a second. Let's say I'm interested in marketing and I wanna look at marketing careers and I wanna look at the, rather than looking at people with marketing careers, I've got a lot of options, jobs, I'm gonna use or people, I'm gonna use groups and I'm gonna say, hey, this is interesting. This is us.jobs. What else do we have here? Maybe we, I'm interested in creative and media campaign jobs. So maybe this will be interesting. Or let's go down a little bit. You don't want to look through thousands and thousands, right? Here, there's got about a thousand results. 
but maybe I'll just look at a couple, one or two from the first page, one or two from the second page, and maybe one from the third page. Uh, maybe I'm even Atlanta based. So I want to look at, you know, connecting with people in my region, um, or I'm interested in living in Atlanta because it's suddenly it's probably, I don't know, 30 degrees warmer than it is here in New York at the moment. Um, so um, let's just choose a group. I can join this group. It's got 244, which is actually a nice. It's not thousands and thousands. You might want to, you know, join some big groups, some smaller groups. And once you're joined, so for example, here, I'm a member of Yeshiva University. Let me show you a group that I'm a member of, Yeshiva University Career Center. You won't be surprised that I'm a member of this group. You're all welcome to join, as I mentioned before. And you can become a, um, once you're a member, you're actually a degree closer or LinkedIn suddenly sort of bumps all the other people in the group up to, I guess it's half a degree or degree closer. It's much easier to reach out to other people that are in the same group. And you can look for the people in the group um, and you can actually search through those as well. So if you want more information on that, feel free to reach out. But of course, again, you can just do see all and you can experiment on your own and you'll actually see some of those you can search by locations or current companies, where they're working. Here we go, a nice selection already pops up. So um, you can suddenly use the search again. I might want to see, okay, well, out of all those, who's in marketing? And let's see if that's going to work for me. Maybe my computer's tired after a long day. All right, well, let's see, you can go by industries as well. So you could type in marketing and let's see if we can do it that way and then scroll down you should be able to add that and then show results okay well i need to practice that more and if you uh find out let me know otherwise i'll uh, explore it myself and let you know okay so a couple of um other things that you can do is let's go back to our screen over here and um we have on our next slide, uh, Facebook, right? You post a status asking your network if they know anyone, right? So uh, make sure to use your networks, right? Ask your friends, ask all those people that are in your class, maybe post something on Blackboard or one of your class groups and say, hey, I'm really interested in making connections in marketing, want to learn more about the field. Um, do any of your parents work in, or siblings maybe work in one of those fields? And uh, I would love to connect with them just to ask them a couple of quick questions, right? And hopefully if you're in a class of you know, 15, 20 people, uh, some of them are gonna know someone. And uh, if you don't get any luck with the first post, try again a week later, right? There's nothing to prevent you from posting. I mean, I wouldn't post every uh, five minutes, but you can repost uh, suddenly with a, a few days or a week break. Um, one of the, I'll just tell you anecdotally, you know, an interesting way to sometimes uh, broaden your um, connections is um, you know, if you find people that let's say you're in artificial intelligence, that's an area of great interest. And in your research, you know, while, while you're Googling trends, you see either a YouTube clip um, from a, uh, you know, perhaps someone who has, you know, quite a nice following, or you see articles which uh, talk about, you know, the latest research in the field and it quotes and maybe even has the email address of the person who is, um, who is in sort of uh, wrote that research or on YouTube, you comment on their video. There's some great videos on uh, quantum networks, artificial intelligence on almost anything on YouTube. And if you are someone who posts a lot and they may be pretty senior, I've seen people in Google who post about what they're doing in the area of quantum networks. I've seen people in uh, big companies, Adidas, Nike, you know, who are posting videos about what they do in sort of the marketing realm. So if you comment, many times people want to interact or maybe on Instagram, you comment and they'll uh, interact and you might be able to direct message them and eventually be able to build a relationship with them that way. And that's another way to convert people into your uh, yes from no's to yeses. So um, one other thing I would just mention again, going back to synagogue networks, put something on your shul's Facebook group. If your synagogue, your church, your religious community, your personal community, maybe you're in a network of athletes, um, or, you know, basketball players or volleyball, or you're in all sorts of different networks, many of you. Um, so even if it's, you know, for a hobby, not related to work, ask people if you, uh, or if it was real time, if you're playing in a gym with people, um, you know, outside of school, um, feel free to ask around, right? Uh, have those conversations and find out from people what they do. Next time you're sitting on a plane, I don't encourage that necessarily uh, this week or this month even, um, but be curious about what people do, get into conversation with them. And you'll very soon, as many of our uh, students have found, they've made actually amazing connections on their travels. 
Uh, if all else fails and you don't know anyone there, um, just try picking up the uh, uh, try picking up the um, the phone line. Reach out cold on, on LinkedIn to people and say to them, "I'd love a few minutes of your time to learn more about your company." Um, you know, try old-fashioned way. Try the phone. Try reaching people that way too. Um, so, you know, smaller companies, perhaps you're more likely to be able to speak to someone, but say, I'd love to speak to someone, you know, one of your associates, one of your entry level, I want to learn a little bit more about what it's like to work at your company. And many times they are very happy to connect you. Um, in fact, I think the, the government jobs are one of the most likely. They really, they don't want to spend time with people that are only moderately interested in their jobs. They want to maximize their time from an employer perspective. And obviously before they put anyone through many hoops of interview rounds and so on, uh, they tell you, give us a call, give us an email. Every Almost every job listing will have an email address of a real live human being that you can speak to um, or connect with, at least over email, a range of phone conversation, because they really discourage people from applying if they don't already um, you know, know kind of what they're getting themselves in for. Um, it, you know, we talked before, it can waste your time, even though you see, you know, it's quick. You can apply to maybe 20 jobs in 10 minutes the old fashioned way, right? On LinkedIn or any easy apply website. But it's not very effective because the hiring managers really have no reason to um, to read what you submit. Um, I should, probably shouldn't spend too much time on this again because I kind of want to uh, wrap up uh, close to 45 minutes since I said this was a you know trying to do everything in 45 minutes. So I figured that would be a good time for me too and take some questions. Um, but he tells you uh, he kind of lists people in three categories. As you can see, the curmudgeons. Uh, the obligates and the boosters. Anyone, he, you know, obviously they they are a minority. You might need to reach out to ten people just to get one booster, um, but that is the nature of the of the uh, I don't want to say the game. The nature of the strategy, I should say. We're very we try and be very strategic at our career center and advise you on strategy. So this is all strategy today, and the one thing I encourage you. And I was actually with a student earlier today, and they were kind of basically said to me a version of the question that I've heard over and over again. They're like, okay, I reach out to an alum. Um, or I reach out to, you know, maybe someone from my shul, uh, maybe my shul is a little bit different, but suddenly an alum that doesn't know me, or I reach out to someone, you know, I put something on my, uh, like Teenex Shul's listserv, right? They have a big, uh, used to be Yahoo, now it's a Google groups. They probably have 20,000 people on it. I post something and I say, you know, just two, three lines. Um, I'm interested in learning more about um, careers in um, software developing or careers in artificial intelligence. If you or someone you know, has even 20 minutes to speak with me, I'd be so grateful, right? And that takes maybe all of three lines. Um, and you never know, you're probably, you know, uh, again, first time you might not get too much response, post it again, maybe people didn't see it, maybe it was Yeshiva week and everyone was out of town and weren't really checking their TNEC shuls or their email. Uh, again, many communities, not just TNEC, many communities um, have such a thing. Um, so put yourself in their shoes, you know, would you respond if you saw something like that? If you were a professional in the artificial intelligence arena and you saw, uh, uh, suddenly, if you were went to YU and you saw a student at YU who's looking to learn more about the industry, um, what do you think? Do you have you think you could spare 20 minutes? Some of you may be curmudgeons, or maybe not even curmudgeons, but just you know we're way too busy. You know, there's too much going on in my life, my personal life, my family life, everything else. I've got finals coming. You know, who knows what it is? I've got I'm taking a, a professional exam, or I need to submit an assignment to my boss. Right? There, there are going to be um, you know, the timing may not be right. Some of them will just be commodities. They just don't want to reply at all. Some of them will be like, oh my goodness, yeah, this is a YU student in distress. Maybe I'm just going to reply because I feel bad. You know, look, you know, I want to help them. It's Corona after all. Um, so don't rule them out. But he says you might not get as far with them as possible. And you'll realize after one or two communications, uh, which category kind of, whether they're obligates or actual boosters who really want to help you. Um, but hopefully you will all find uh, some boosters along the way. And if you're not finding them, um, try, try again, but also let us know. Don't just do this endlessly, you know, if they're after putting putting yourself out there, um, don't do that endlessly without checking in with us. We are happy to uh, give you some suggestions on boosting your chance of reaching those boosters. So uh, again, I just thought, put yourself in the mind of the person that you're reaching out to, to think about what would engage me, right? Um, what would be a good way to get me to respond? Um, and here is very quickly, and I'm basically wrapping up with these few slides, but here is a five point email. So if you're reaching out, again, this isn't necessary for um, uh, five town shuls listserv or for, uh, you know, maybe your shul bulletin, 
you know, your synagogue goes in that goes out every Friday, or maybe every uh, there's a midweek edition. Maybe they'd be happy to put even longer. But the, sometimes when you can just capture people's attention in just a hundred words, you show or less, you show that you're very respectful. You show that um, you know you're not going to waste their time, and you're also it, it means it's not very lengthy, right? It's going to uh, stand out because you know as opposed to very long posts, which people don't really have time for in today's world, um, it's very short. So. Uh, he suggests, this is from Steve Dalton himself, he suggests that the more words you put in, the more opportunity for errors. So that's uh, that's his suggestion. But I'm just saying, I think in a busy world, just you know, a good idea is to keep it to less than 100 words. Um, don't mention anywhere uh, the word jobs, right? Don't say, I'm looking for jobs, right? People will probably put two and two together and figure that out, right? They'll, they'll know that already. Um, but don't mention that. Don't bring it up even in your first conversation with them. Uh, don't mention jobs suddenly in uh, trying to, to sort of get their attention. Um, connection goes first, right? So if your professor made a referral to someone, uh, just the other day, we had one of our professors in our biotechnology um, course. This was actually, I was looking for a mentor for a student where we have a mentorship program for international students in our graduate programs. And I was looking for a mentor for someone in biotech. So I reached out to the director of the program, I said, you know, I've been having some trouble. I've been sort of reaching out to people on LinkedIn, connections of connections, kind of second degree connections. Haven't been having much luck. I've had a lot of luck in, in getting connections uh, or getting mentors through reaching out to people in marketing and in data analytics and other fields. But for some reason, biotech wasn't working for me. So I reached back out to Rana, who is uh, uh, directs the biotech program. I said, Rana, like, can you mention some people so that if I mention your name, I think it's going to take my outreach to them a lot further. So she gave me two, she, she uh, gave me two people and uh, first person actually had since made Aliyah is in Israel, um, but had I think presented a, few, a couple of years ago for her program. And she said, look, you know, I've kind of, I'm not in touch with her currently, but you know, reach out to her. And indeed I reached out and about five minutes later, even though it was probably, I think after midnight in Israel, by the time I reached out on LinkedIn, um, I got a message back and um, so, you know, mention it. And this is what I did in my email. I said, you know, um, Rana Khan, uh, who directs our biotech program, recommended reaching out to you. You've been so helpful in the past. So I probably actually went just over 100 words. I just wanted, you know, to kind of say to, you know, you've been such an asset to us in the past. And that helped me to uh, get what I was looking for and get that connection and get the attention of the reader. Uh, and I'm happy to say that she is going to be one of our mentors for one of our biotech students. Okay, generalize your interest. Uh, your booster may open up to her network of other companies, right? So don't just say, I'm looking for information about IBM or I'm looking for information about uh, working at LinkedIn or working at Twitter um, because that really restricts it. They, they may say, you know what? Like, I don't feel comfortable referring to it. So whatever it might be, it might, might sort of raise a flag. So be very general. I'm gonna show you a good example of this in just a moment. So before you leave, you'll have something very practical. You can take a picture of the next slide if you would like. Uh, you don't have to copy a word for word, um, but I'm going to show you a couple of things, and I highlighted these things in, in yellow over here already. Um, here are the five points, and let's see them play out in real life. So here's an example, right? I might, if it's an email, again, on LinkedIn, you won't necessarily have a subject line, but here I'm going to pretend for now that I'm a YU data analytics student, so that's going to be my subject line, seeking your advice, okay? Now I'm kind of flattered if I was receiving that email. I think, ah, oh, someone's seeking my advice. That's pretty cool. Now, again, I might not have time to respond, in which case, if they follow up a week later, it gives me an idea, okay, this person's actually serious. They're not just, maybe they are reaching out to 100 people on LinkedIn, but it looks like they're serious because they're following up a week later. This is good. They didn't just, you know, blast their whole entire network and hope, you know, uh, that one of them would respond, but they, they seem, you know, very targeted. So maybe the second time I see this, I'll respond. But even the first time, let's see what this person does well. Uh, I'm a sophomore, so without having to read too much on their LinkedIn profile, Again, you might want to put a link, if you're sending this over email, put a link to your LinkedIn profile. I would definitely recommend doing that. Um, but for this purposes, I'm a sophomore reaching out as a suggestion of, so let's say this is Shlomo might be the person that sits, sits next to me in synagogue, right? So um, maybe, or someone that I, uh, you know, maybe is my next door neighbor, right? So, and you could even write that, right? Who sits next to me in synagogue or who my next door neighbor, right? Depending on, um, <laughs> depending on the circumstances. But here, I just kept it short and sweet. I know that they know Shlomo. I'm going to mention this guy, Shlomo. Um, I would love 20 minutes of your time, right? What are they doing? They're kind of making it. It's not like a, I'd love an hour or I'd love to speak to you about, right? Which is kind of like not very 
come find us. Someone says, I'd love to speak to you about it. I'm like, well, okay. But my usual meeting with students is let's say 30 minutes. Sometimes I'll go to an hour if we're doing like interview prep or where, you know, the special situations where I might go longer. So, so what are they talking about? When they want to speak to me, do they want half an hour? Do they want an hour? Uh, if they want an hour, I really can't do that. You know what? Forget it. I'm just not going to respond, right? But here it's very clear, right? This person wrote uh, 20 minutes. So I highlighted it there. I would recommend something like 20 minutes. Maybe you put 15 to 20 minutes um, to ask about your experience with IBM. Okay, so they have mentioned the company specifically, but what he's also done is I'm trying to learn more about analytics careers at technology companies, right? So they've made it broader, right? I want to learn about your experience, right? I'm interested in you. But I'm also interested in the field, right? So this isn't just like about you. This is about my trying to learn more about the field. Your insights would be really helpful. I realize this may be a busy time for you. So if we're unable to connect, right? If I send something this week, I'd say, I realize this may be, you know, this is Yeshiva week um, and a busy time. So if we're unable to connect, um, I'll try again next week to see whether that is more convenient, right? So here, what we've done is we've made it time bound, right? I'm going to have a very good excuse to reach out in a week's time because A, I've said to them, I'm going to reach out in a week, right? I'm planning to reach out. Um, and B, um, now that I've said it, it's not going to be weird to them. They won't think I'm like stalking them or whatever because here it is, you know, I've uh, I put it out there that I'm going to be in touch again in a week. And sometimes if you say you're going to be in touch again, uh, they'll realize, hey, this person is actually really interested and they're actually might, I might hear from them again. You know what? I don't need more emails in my inbox. Let me just, email them right back and say, sure, you know, let's arrange 20 minutes. Or maybe I'll say, you know what? Yeah, this week is a bit crazy, but I'm happy to connect um, next week. Let me know what times work and, you know, we'll set something up. So if you want more examples of either emails or uh, ways to reach out on LinkedIn, I highly encourage you to log in again to YU MVP. You can tell I'm plugging some of the other career center resources um, in our remaining couple of minutes this evening. Go on to yu.edu slash MVP or bit.ly slash yu canvas if you haven't already enroll, enrolled in our canvas course do enroll that takes 30 seconds you're not going to get spam from us you're not going to get assignments from us it's just since the beginning of corona we've been uploading all of our um all of our handouts all of our tips our top tips and so on onto our canvas page so there's some great resources including some great resources on resumes and especially on linkedin and for reaching out and for networking so i would highly encourage you to look at those all right, so step three, I told you right at the beginning that we weren't going to spend time on, on uh, step three. And the reason is, number one, because there's only so much we can get into 45 minutes or now closer to 50 minutes. Um, but also because um, we are actually going to, I have the privilege in a couple of weeks time, and one of my colleagues also, we're going to give uh, some webinars on the next stage. So very briefly, um, the next stage is about recruiting, meaning you recruiting allies, right? So if I have a good conversation with someone in, uh, I, I do my homework about informational interviewing or informational networking. And again, uh, read our handouts. If you can't find it on Canvas or on our website, just email one of us and one of the advisors, and we will be happy to send a PDF of it to you. Um, and there's some great other resources online about informational interviewing. And if you cannot, um, it, one of the great things is even if the person can't immediately help you, uh, for whatever reason, they don't know much about that company, they're not, they've only maybe been there a shorter time or they're just not as involved. Maybe they work remotely and they really don't know exactly what's going on in, in the other teams, like the, the team that you want to work in. Um, but at the very least, you've made a good impression and you've potentially recruited an ally because maybe the next day they're on a conference call and uh, one person in the conference call actually comes on the data analytics team and it's kind of just, you know, as they're gearing up for the, uh, you know, for the meeting, they're shooting the breeze and the data, the data analytics says, yeah, you know what, like I've been out, I, ha I had COVID, I was really, I was out of it for like, you know, over a month. And then one of my family members was sick, it wasn't COVID, it was something else. And I've just really, you know, I'm just getting back to the office now. I've got so much work. I, I don't even know how I'm gonna, you know, handle all this. I, I wish I had like, you know, five and the secretaries there, I'd be no admin. Wish I had like just, you know, someone who could like help me out with some projects, you know. Um, and so, you know, the ears of the person that you spoke to the previous week, the previous day might might actually say, well, you know what, it's funny you say that. I just spoke to the student who seemed really great on the phone. I didn't have much to offer to him, but you know what? Like he seemed really interested and excited. He'd obviously done some research on the field. Um, let me pass on his details and why didn't you reach out to him? And so again, you never quite know if you can recruit some allies. Um, and again, look in, in uh, Steve Dalton's book for more information if you want to get ahead or come to our office and find out more. 
Um, but the goal will be to repeat steps two and three. Um, so we talked about um, being able to um, recruit people to our, um, well, to be able to contact people. We talked about that method, that spreadsheet to really help us um, reach out to as many people as we can. Um, and if they're not, you know, you're not getting anywhere, uh, keep some good notes on the conversation. Those are some of my other tabs on the spreadsheet as well to input some notes from those conversations or the dates of the conversations so I can potentially follow up um, as and when needed. Um, and those will eventually, this is the best way that our um, current alumni that are in positions and our current students that are using this type of method, these are the ways that are actually leading to interviews and employment. And these are the ways that as a hiring manager, I can tell you um, those people that have followed Steve Dalton's advice or uh, suddenly have reached out to me in the past, those were the people that when I needed to make a hire, those were the people I called and said, you know, I don't know if you're still in the market for jobs even, uh, but I have something coming open and I would love you to consider applying for this. Um, so those are really, you want in, in some ways people to be allies to be able to reach out um, to you. So here we go, just a, a state of what's to come, just a little glimpse, um, information interviews. Again, this is what we're not gonna do today, but one big thing is to build rapport, make a great impression. You never know where, it, where it's gonna go and to gain usable information, right? Whatever you can gain. And even if it's gaining information that this person really can't help you that much, well, you've learned something, right? And maybe they'll suggest someone in a different team or in a, you know, maybe someone they used to work with at another company a few years ago who you can reach out to. So that is usable information. And I'm not gonna go through this now, but here we go. Um, we're gonna talk about how to structure um, informational interviews. And that is gonna be, you're gonna have to wait all the way till February 24th. We're gonna talk about the tiara of networking. We're really gonna do a deep dive into networking. Uh, as you can see, we've got many other wonderful webinars coming up. Um, and uh, the week, uh, not the week after, I'm sorry, the following month, we're gonna have uh, some more networking success stories from one of our uh, relatively, re relatively recent alumni. So he's gonna kind of bring this all together. So it takes it very much out of the theoretical into the practical. Um, if you uh, can't wait till February or March, and in fact, I would recommend <laughs> not waiting, please uh, just reach out to us. Uh, we are a friendly team. We have some great resources. Like I said before, join our LinkedIn page, go to our Canvas site, uh, look at past. Uh, if you wanna review anything from tonight, go to our YouTube channel because within uh, probably by the end of the week, if not early next week, we will have posted this webinar and others, um, or just go onto our website or email the Career Center. Um, if you get a bounce back of it, you can email me directly, but if I'm out for whatever reason or can't respond, um, and you want a quick, res quick response, feel free to use the Career Center email. And um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone tonight, I really appreciate you joining me tonight. We went quickly. Um, there's a lot more to discuss, but I hope that you have the confidence that in just a short amount of time, um, you can actually do some incredible work in laying the foundations before even applying to jobs, just getting together your shortlist. And if nothing else, the take home for tonight, I want you to um, really think creatively, how do I make connections? Um, how do I go back to, how do I turn the no's into yeses to add more people into my, um, into my sort of network of people that I, that I know I'm acquainted with? And then whenever you have those five minutes, look at what's next on my list of 40 or 50 companies, right? Which is the next one? Which did I score? Which did I rank highly? Which am I really motivated to? And spend those five minutes um, reaching out to someone at the places where you're motivated. The applications can come um, later. Again, I mean, if you see something that needs to apply by like the end of the week or by February 1st, so you know those jobs, you'll actually have to maybe sort of bypass this step, right? That's a, obviously a little bit more urgent. You might not afford the luxury, but get started with the networking. This is the part that takes time. This is what we call in, um, I, some of you may have learned in sort of uh, business classes or elsewhere, this is the bottleneck with people getting back to you and making those connections. So the earlier you start on that, the more, the quicker you sort of leverage and advance your um, career search and eventually being able to secure um, a wonderful and impactful internship or job and wonderful career. Um, I am now going to uh, stop the uh, recording. And if anyone has any questions, you are more than welcome to, um, we are more than welcome to,